Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. Last time uh, we worked on the differential input flange for my son's Spitfire project and uh, figured we might as well just move right on up the drivetrain and show you what we had to do next to the drive shaft yokes to make them work. But before we do, I wanted to circle back to that bolt pattern that we had to put in the uh, differential input flange, which I measured, you know, measured the, uh, got the averages of the, uh, the hole centers and it came out to some really oddball numbers. Now, I should have known, you know, you look at the, this thing was a, a Japanese part, so I'm thinking, well, maybe it's metric, but it really didn't match up to anything metric. And this hole, this, these holes were exactly, uh, a, you know, letter drill P size, uh, three, I think it was 321. So what I should have done was to lay this out in CAD. You take these dimensions and put them in, and lo and behold, what you end up with if you uh, if you lay this pattern out in CAD, is these things go onto a bolt circle, and that bolt circle has a diameter of 2.75 inches. So that made a whole lot more sense. Now the only thing that was a little bit odd was this angle for these holes was 80 degrees. So we had 80 degrees here, and we had 100 degrees between these holes. So it was an asymmetrical uh, bolt pattern, but we could have done this very easily with the rotary head, parking the head, you know, at the, at the origin, offsetting 1.375, and then just using the, um, the uh, uh, degree scale on the head to punch those four holes in one setting instead of going back and forth between all of the locations uh, would have been easier to do it that way, and I should have checked it through CAD to determine that. Just did it afterwards. So anyway, let's go on to the drive shaft, and I'll show you what we had to do to the yokes to get those working. Back on the Spitfire project, and we're making one of the uh, world's shortest drive shafts. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. So the problem we're having is the tubing is supposed to fit on the yokes is way too small. So we'll figure out what we got. We've got to make 2.347. And of course the tubing is not round. We can determine what the min and max is. Looks like two inches, three twenty eight, three thirty one. Not horribly out of round. Let's say two point three twenty eight. 2.332, 2 2.330, 2.340, 17 thousandths has to come off of this diameter. The trick's going to be holding it. I'm thinking holding it in the vise and then put a couple parallels up under the back side of this so that it can't rock to the side if I get some cutting pressure on the side here. That's about the best I can do. Well, let's give it a shot. Now here's one case where getting close um, I may want to offset the head because I can use a diameter 2.347 offset the head so that our, the side of the cutter is at that amount and then at two points 90 degrees center up manually before I start using the indicator, which all I have is a tenths indicator. And I'm going to need to get real close in order for that thing to, for me to be able to dial in with that. If I do the math, with a cutter offset, or rather a spindle offset of 0.9235, that puts the outside of the cutter flush with the outside of this diameter. Nine. 
two, three, five. So now I'm going to manually try to get first I'm going to get the X, excuse me, the Y at about 90. Now visually I'm going to line up the X. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to swing 90 degrees. Come back and look at the X. Looks pretty good. I'm going to zero the DRO. I'm going to bring the indicator in contact. Now one thing I do have to do is bring the head back to zero. Let's touch this and put it on zero. Let's see if I can get you to see that a little better. I'm off about three thousandths in the Y. I'm within about a half thousandths TIR. I think that's good enough for a drive shaft. It's going to take very light cuts. Looks like we're at 2.334, so another couple thousandths. Point three three zero. And basically, it just feels like it's starting to go in there. I think that's a light press fit, light tap fit.
Now the second one's easy because the Y is already dialed in. All I've got to do is uh, tweak in the X. Remember, this is a tenths indicator. And this one's within a half TIR. Still at about 338, 2.338. So four more thousandths off the radius. I'll do two and then try two again. Uh, 2.332 another two thousandths off the diameter Yep, we're on size. Just wants to start. Yeah, we definitely have a high side, or a light side. Some surface imperfections that are causing this thing to not rotate completely smoothly. I don't know if you noticed when you uh, came on board here, but uh, we've got a strap here holding up the, the whiteboard. This thing blew down when we had some windy days and I already put a ding in it here. It was absolutely perfect before that, but live and learn. So I hope you enjoyed those two quick Spitfire projects uh, dealing with the drivetrain. We got the drive shaft yoke. We got the, uh, excuse me, the drive shaft yokes. We got the differential input flange. Prior to that, also had a couple of brackets uh, for mounting the rear leaf spring and the actual carrier for the differential that I didn't show because it was a lot of the same kind of operation, just straight milling, but I'm really impressed with the ability of the K&T to, you know, utilize that rotary head uh, and mill, you know, IDs and ODs. It's just, it's great either way, but the only thing you have to watch is I've got all of the, uh, the scale set up so that it comes to zero on, uh, on the way with the spindle traveling out. 
you know, there's a little bit of backslash, there's, you know, 10 or 15 thousandths backslash on the, on the vernier if I'm running the scale in. So I can't, you know, pick an absolute number and say, I'm going to mill down to this. What I have to do is, uh, you know, get, get close, take a reading with calipers or, uh, or micrometers, and then go, uh, you know, um, incrementally from that, which it's very accurate to take X amount off and come down to a, a specific diameter. But I've got everything set up to where if I'm doing IDs, I can dial in a number from zero coming out, and it is basically spot on from what I can tell. So I don't know of any other way to do it. You know, you gotta, you gotta pick one way to set that thing up. Otherwise I'd be re-zeroing re the head each time I wanted to do an ID and OD, and sometimes you're doing both. So you just, you just pick one and go with it. So many more machining projects coming up. Um, I've got a little jib crane project that I hinted at in the last video with that, uh, with that uh, all stainless steel jib crane base that uh, I am going to repurpose. That's going to be mounted next to the KNT to put on the rotary table. I've got a heavy angle plate and heck, even the vise, taking the vise on and off. Um, I've got to repair my uh, crank handle now for the uh, slide offsetting the spindle because I bent that against the vise. So I'm hoping to be able to either just bend it back or unscrew it from the cross handle and put a new one on from McMaster. So it just never ends. So. Thanks again for tuning in, for all the likes and subscribes, and the, uh, you know, just, just really appreciate your support over these past couple years. Uh, I'll try to keep good content coming to you. Until then, stay safe.